Valve has shown us yet again that they are listening to everything that we say. They're listening to their customers and for a company the size of Valve, the rapid pace of iteration on the software of the Steam Deck is absolutely mind-blowing to me. One of the coolest things about the Steam Deck is that Valve has given the end user the ability to very, very finely control exactly how their device is running the games that they're playing. So if you're playing a game that doesn't require all the power of the Steam Deck, you can use the TDP in order to lower how many watts of battery you are using and give you a longer battery life. You can manually control GPU. You can turn on half rate shading in order to conserve battery life. And you can even change the refresh rate of the screen if you're on the beta channel down to 40 frames per second, giving you a really, really smooth gameplay experience. All of this is fantastic, but and as, as anybody who's messed with the quick access menu items on the Steam Deck will tell you, inevitably, once you start messing around with that stuff, you're going to launch a game, forget that you've limited the TDP down to three watts or something, and you go to play a game and you get horrible, horrible performance, and you're like, what did I do wrong? Why is this game suddenly not working? You close the game, you reopen it, and you, you're trying to troubleshoot it, and then you remember, oh yeah, that's right, I had throttled the, the TDP down, so I need to turn that off on this particular game. Oh, that's right. I was going to use 60 frames per second on this game instead of 40 frames per second. And you go through all of the settings, change those, you dial them into exactly where you want, and then you play the game. And the thing that people have been asking for ever since we got our hands on the Steam Deck is it would be fantastic if we had per game profiles so that when I'm playing a game that doesn't require a lot of power, I can turn on that TDP limiter in order to make sure that I'm not running running my uh, Steam Deck's battery into the ground. I can turn on half rate shading if it's a game where turning on half rate shading will save me some battery without without ruining the visual quality of the game. And then in another game, I can have that TDP limiter turned off. I can have my screen refresh rate down to 40, 40 frames per second. I'm sorry, 40 hertz and my frame rate at 40 frames per second. And I can turn off the half rate shading in order to make sure that my game looks as good as possible. And all of that saved on a game by game basis really changes the game and what's cooler you can turn this on or off at will you can have a system-wide setting that you are using all of the time or you can say all right well for this particular game i want to set up my profile exactly just so why would you want to do that well maybe most of the games that you have are running just fine and you don't really have any reason to mess with the quick access menu that's great but if you have just that one game that's messing things up, then you can adjust just that one game by turning this setting on or off. I think that it's really fantastic and it's a great way to go about it. But if I were in charge, if I were taking it one step further, then I would allow people to submit their settings as like a community profile and have people vote on those community profiles. And then I could see which profile was the most uh, popular when launching a game. That way, you know, somebody who doesn't know that much about this stuff could l download a game, go to the community profile, pick the most popular one, and get the best experience without having to do any of the fiddling. This is the kind of thing that Valve has already done with the Steam Controller. They had Steam Controller profiles out there, and people would uh, use those profiles and basically the ones that got used the most floated up to the top and the ones that didn't get used very much dropped down to the bottom. Does that necessarily mean that the that the best ones were on top? No, not necessarily, but for the most part it worked pretty well. And of course you still have the ability to change whatever you want, so I think that overall this is a great great system. Now that is not the only update in these patch notes. There's also one that I think is very important if you're somebody who has been using the streaming component of the Steam Deck, essentially taking your really nice PC and then streaming the games that you're playing 
to your Steam Deck while you're in your house. Uh, one of the issues that I've run into with that is when you hit the Steam menu button or the Quick Access menu button, I didn't have those menus pop up the way that they do when I'm playing a game natively on the Steam Deck. I had other things pop up or nothing at all would happen which was really, really frustrating. That meant that if I wanted to stop playing the game, I had to go through the game's menu options and close the game manually, which at the end of the day, isn't a big deal, but, and it, let me know in the comments down below if you're somebody who goes through the menus to shut off your game, or do you just hit the Steam menu button and hit exit game right from there after you've saved? I wanna know what you guys are doing. I just hit the Steam menu button and exit the game which is probably, I'm guessing, the wrong way to do it, though I could be wrong about that. That's what I've been doing. And you don't have that option when you are streaming a game. Well, Valve also made it so that if you push the power button, it gives you the, the option to say stop streaming, which is fantastic. One more change that they made, which I think is kind of a big deal, is the way that the system interfaces with a TV or a monitor when you dock it. So for those of you that don't know, the native resolution of the Steam Deck is 1280 by 800. And when sometimes I was getting it to work the way that you would expect, and sometimes I was not getting it to work the way that you would expect. But what I would do is I would hook the Steam Deck up to, in my case, a capture card, but essentially a TV and then it would change the resolution of the Steam Deck interface and everything would be really, really tiny. So tiny that you really couldn't make things out. It was just in incredibly small because it's an interface that's designed around an 800p resolution and I'm hooking it up to a 4K capture card. That meant that everything was 4K and really, really hard to read. Well, they've changed it so now it will scale everything to be essentially the same size as it would be if you hook it up to a 4K capture card or a 4K TV, it's now going to be a more readable interface, which is a really good thing. There's a bunch of other stuff in the patch notes, but those are the most important things. If you want to see the whole patch notes, I did leave a link to the patch notes in the description down below that like button. So make sure that you check that out if you want to. And watch this video if you haven't already. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you next time. Bye, everybody.